the northwest corner uh, did have some termite damage about 12 to 16 inches up from the bottom and it was it was pretty bad uh, we were unable to do maybe like an epoxy repair is a pretty good alternative especially for maybe the farmer or the homeowner um, if the damage is limited however they, they chewed away a good portion of it and, and that was part of what had caused the sill you know to deteriorate as well so the option was to scarf in two and a half foot piece with a um, bladed scarf joint. You know, after assessing the post bottom and we kind of had some joinery coming in, we had some lower girts and some braces coming down. Fortunately, we were able to stay below that, uh, which obviously creates a, a little more time into your repair. Uh, so we wanted to stay below that. So uh, we were able to cut away, I would say 90% of the termite damage. If we get a jack and a four by four, we can support it here and here. Mm -hmm. I think what we'll do, we'll just scarf in a like a 30 inch piece and then we'll lift off of it. So the rod's really confined to here. I mean, it's probably solid right here. Yeah. Is that thing that's so close to the We just want to support this so when we cut this out, we're going to have to put the scarf in here before we lift. With this method of lifting, with 20 inches of board here, they're gonna be in the way. So we're gonna do the repair on the post first, and then lift. Roughed it out with a chainsaw. I'm now finishing it with combination circular saw, hand saw, mostly my chisel. Um, you know, I tried to stay an eighth or a quarter away from the line just to get the big chunks out of the way. We have a little remnants of some termite damage here. Most of it was contained to here. So what I'll do once I get this cleaned up, I'll put some structural epoxy, you know, I'll clean this up. We'll put some structural epoxy in there to fill the void. 
the, the termites are gone. A couple things happened. We really wanted to stay below this skirt line here, so we were limited with our space. The scarf is actually a little undersized. I would have liked to have seen the blade two feet instead of a foot and a half. So we're just gonna have to deal with this four inches of damage, but it's only about an inch deep. So again, once I clean up this blade, uh, we'll put a structural epoxy in versus like, um, well, a non-structural epoxy or a wood epox, which would just fill the void. The structural epoxy, it all, it'll fill the void, but it'll also be just as strong as if it were good wood. You know, ideally you would have liked to cut all that away. Uh, but again, we were limited with this skirt here. We've got quite a bit of joinery going on right in this area. <clears throat> but it's still gonna work. That as long as we put a structural epoxy in these voids versus just kind of a filler epoxy, um, it'll, it'll bring back some of that integrity. So in the instructions on the epoxy call for it to set for 10 minutes, just so it can penetrate. Really fill those voids. And it'll, it'll bring back the structural integrity of this post. This is your piece. It's not bad. basic rules on when you design a scarf joint. I mean, you said it's a, a simple scarf joint, but what are the measurements? Do you want a third, uh, a third, and a third? Do you, how well, do you a lot of it's to do with your tooling, you know? Okay. I, um, so yeah, like this piece here, you're gonna chop out with a chain mortiser. And uh, our chain mortisers tend to have a bar on which will cut an inch and a half. So that's really easy if you set that to an inch and a half. But uh, in this, in this case, we're kind of limited because of our, the amount of good wood we've got on our post. There's not much there. Yeah, so, you know, we've only got a, well, it's gonna be a, you know, a 16 inch table here. This is the table of the scarf joint, this flat area. So, ideally, you'd probably want an 18, two, two foot, uh, but we're gonna back it up with um, a lot of pegs and screws, you know, to ensure that that's a good joint. All right, well, um, the thing you wanna do uh, is make your end cuts first. So you'll cut on this side, roll it twice, and cut on this side. It'll, it'll cut through, you don't have to cut on four sides. My next process would be to rip down this line. Flip it over and cut through here. Now you're, right, and you're not gonna get it all, but then what we'll do is we'll put a mortiser on here on both sides and we'll probably have to mortise out here somewhere and <coughs> make that shoulder cut and the whole thing should just fall right out. And then we could, you can make this cut and we'll make a drop cut. Lots of good cuts on here. Grab you the saw and uh, make this cut here. That's correct. Uh huh. Yeah. Good. 
if you can kind of ease that in there. It's, you got about a quarter inch of room at the top. Okay, we need a couple oak shims. There you go, that's good. Good as new. Anybody that feels like getting epoxy all over themselves, <laughs> go ahead, just slop it on there. You don't have to be nice about it. watch it this way, we'll have somebody eyeball you for level, okay? We just want to get it close. Let's put, uh, let's get one peg in before we drill the other hole. So that way, if you drill your second hole and it moves it a little bit, you know, then the, the, then the first hole doesn't work, right? So. Fire away. Nice and easy. You'll break the peg if you hit it too hard. Now we're going to leave a little reveal on the inside and we'll cut it flush on the outside. A little more. There you go. I like about a three quarter or an inch reveal. Slightly different. I've only got two The screws just kind of hold it together. The pegs really do more of the work. If this thing ever were to move, the screws would probably break. The pegs wouldn't. That's done. Easy, huh? We cut the joinery, cut it to length, and you know, we slid it in from the uh, west side. Again, there's a bunch of different scarf joints out there, uh, but we felt that the um, bladed scarf joint was okay. Uh, we wanted to eliminate the twist, and that's what the, that's what the blade does. And then, of course, we put four pegs in it and six timber lock screws just to kind of hold everything together. The pegs really kind of do the work. They handle the shear and the joinery handles maybe the twisting from maybe the forces of nature or whatever. And the screws are just kind of a backup plan for them.